Good morning everyone. This is Linda with Linda Sue Plants for you. Um, today I'm going to, well, I'm going to do a lot of things today, unfortunately. I've got quite the messes on my hands here, my friends. And I'm going to work very hard to get this cleaned up. I was in the process of repotting plants and getting things ready for winter and I came across this mess and I'm going to show you a close-up of what I'm talking about. Yuck! If you want to know what that is and you want to know how I fix the problem Stay tuned. Hello everyone. I'm back. Okay, I showed you a close-up of this. And now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. Um, I saw an experiment on the YouTube channel of the Orchid Girl. And I thought that was pretty a pretty simple thing to do. So I'm going to try and duplicate that here. Um, <clears throat> before watching that, I kind of figured it was just salt buildup calcium or salts from the, uh, from the water or the fertilizer, and it could be both, or either, or none. Uh, but upon further inspection, I see I have the same sap on here that I had on one of my other plants the other day. So I have come to a conclusion. I want to say first off, I do not like pests on my plants. I'm I'm a real stickler for keeping my plants clean and pest free. And when I see a pest on one plant, I panic. I'm no longer going to do that because honestly my health can't handle it. <laughs> That's the honest truth. I am going to just go through all of my plants one at a time with a magnifying glass and see what is going on and see what I can find out. Now, before I get to this issue, I want to just touch briefly on the, on the sap. I know what causes sap. There's many different things that it can be. Uh, it could be a natural um, exuding of, the, of, some, of juices, and some plants have that. There is a bot botanical name for it, but I don't know what the, I don't know. I used to know what it was, but I don't recall offhand. Um, most likely, that is not the case with this, and this is not the only um, plant that has that issue. So, and it, the other one is on the opposite end of my house. So I'm not sure what the deal is here, but I'm going to, like I said, take it one at a time. Um, it could be. Aphids, it could be scale, it could be mealybugs. I do not see any signs of any of those things. So I'm kind of at a loss. But after I dig further into this and inspect it, I will bring that information back to you when I figure out what it is. But in the meantime, I'm not going to fret about it, and I'm not going to fret anymore about any time I get an insect. I'm just so over it, and <laughs> I'm so tired of dealing with it. And... I know I've said this many times, you guys, but you know what? I've had, I'm 67. I'm going, I'm going to be 68 soon. I've had plants since I was uh, 18, 19 years old, something like that. And I have never experienced the type of problems that we have today in the plant world. And I'm not sure why that is, but I don't like it, and I'm not used to it. And it's honestly, it's wearing me. It's wearing on me. But, like I said, we're going to figure out what it is. There's very few pests that uh, will destroy your plants while you sleep. Um, so I'm not too worried about this. Now, one thing that, one pest that will is thrips. If you have thrips, you need to get a handle on that right away. And you, most of you that have been following me will remember that I just went through that in the last year. <clears throat> and that was very ex. ex exhausting. This is not that. So, alright, let's get the sap out of the way. Now, this, I'm going to do the same experiment or similar 
as the orchid lady did, I'm going to try to scrape this off into <clears throat> into this container here. I purposely chose a dark container so that you could hopefully see what I'm doing. I'm trying carefully to get it in here. Now, keep in mind... <clears throat> I know that this kind of thing is normal for clay pots. This 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 happens. They're a porous um, vessel, and you, that's you're gonna get you're gonna get that on the sides of your pots. There's there's no no getting around that. Um, I don't have it on all of my plants. In fact, most of my clay pots are not like that. They're they're clean and they're fine, but one of the issues I have is I keep it a little colder in here than the average person, and I think that does not help matters any either. So <clears throat> I know that's part of the problem, but um, it is what it is. I can't I can't fix that either. I can't change it um, because my health and my comfort comes before my plants. So. <clears throat> Having said that, I went. I'm going back to putting charcoal in my in my pots because that does help. That helps a lot. On it helps on bacteria and fungus and mold and all kinds of things. So I'm using a horticultural uh, um, uh, charcoal. They're little tiny bits. Most places that sell house plants sell the horticultural uh, charcoal. And you can mix it in with the soil, which I have done in the past and may do again. Um, or uh, most most sites will tell you to um, put about an inch or so at the bottom of your pot before you put your, your the rest of it in. So I did that. I put some in, in my new pot for this. I'm going to completely repot this. I'm not comfortable with just wiping it off, which I know I can do. I can take vinegar and... Or actually, even just water will probably t do the trick. But because I have that sap thing going on here, I just I'm going to get it out of the pot completely. Um, okay, so let's start with the experiment. I think. Whew, that this is definitely the vinegar. All right, I'm going to take this vinegar, and now you can't see. I'm going to have to put this down this camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is an old ice cream cover. And the vinegar will dissolve it. This is vinegar and this is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide um, will react to living organisms such as um, bacteria, you know, and mold. So if I put that on here and it fizzes, then I know I got more issues going on than I suspect. But I'm going to start with the vinegar and I'm going to put a little drop on here. And it did not do anything. It just dissolved. As you can see, it's just dissolving the vinegar, which is what it should do. That is a good sign. This is just water. Now I'm going to take the water. Actually, I don't even need the spoon. I can just pour this on here. And oh, 
Okay. And it didn't do anything. It dissolved it. So it's definitely... If this was a some type of bacteria, it would fizzle up. I don't know if you guys have ever used this for brushing your teeth, um, but sometimes they, su they suggest that when there's a when people have infections and things. Um, I know people with strep throat, things like that. It works. <clears throat> also helps with teeth, keeping teeth clean, and getting rid of infections in your gums. And I'm referring to the hydrogen peroxide. It's a it's a it's a wonderful tool for many, many things. And today it just helped us determine whether this was some kind of fungus or simply just excess salt, which is what it is. Now I've had that on other pots, like I said, but never to the extent that this was. I mean, this was piles of crystals that actually fell off on the table. You're not even seeing half of what was on here. And that scared me a little bit. So, but now what I'm gonna do, and I love these gray pots. I really, really, I think they're so pretty because they're an earthy color, but yet they, they're, it's a little, a little different than on my normal terracotta. So I was starting to stock up on these, but now I'm not sure if I want to keep doing that because if this is more susceptible to this, I don't want to deal with this. Now, like I said, if this didn't have another issue going on, I would simply take a rag and wipe it off, and if that didn't work, spray a little of my mixture that's got um, um, hydrogen peroxide in water and take that off, but it's probably going to come back because now it's in, it's in the pot. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to take this out of the pot and actually first I, I want to wash, wash the leaves off. I did bring my stuff for that. I remembered. I remembered. <laughs> okay, this is my alcohol uh, and water mixture. I've got about maybe one third, maybe a quarter alcohol and the rest water in this bottle. And this is one of those shorter Dollar Tree bottles. I forget the ounces. It's probably a 12 ounce maybe I'm not sure it doesn't say so but it's it's not that big okay I'm gonna shake it up and I'm going to spray and spray the other thing I wanted to talk about with this plant today is the color <clears throat> you can see and by the way this is a um, Begonia maculata whitei, for those of you that don't know. And I wanted one of these for a very, very long time. And then I finally got it, and I don't know. I've just been having issues with it now. So I don't know. When I had this plant growing in the living room on that round table, they were growing really nicely, but they were outgrowing the space. So I had to find a new spot. So I traded them out for some other plants and I put them in my dining room on my Ikea sand in my east window, which just gets the morning light, you know, until noon. And lo and behold, she started fading. Now this happened a while ago, so I don't believe it has anything at all to do with anything but the lighting. I did have an issue with strips on this one, and when that happened, um, I treated it, and I thought we were okay. But here's the problem. I've got a whole table of these. Not, not all maculatas. I've got... Uh, I don't know, probably six, I think six or seven different types of begonias there. And they're all kind of doing the same thing, with the exception of one, I believe. So, <clears throat> I, as much as I don't want to separate them from each other, because I think they look so beautiful together, I think I'm not going to have a choice 
I need to find a new place to, to put these for a while that is not in such a bright light and see what happens. So that's going to be my next my next thing. I'm going to relocate. I'm going to clean these all up. Whoops. And repot. And then relocate. And start over. <laughs> and hopefully we'll bring her back to her glory. Because this, this really is a very beautiful plant. And in all honesty, I, I almost wish that I would have found some type of pest on here so that I knew what I was dealing with. But I didn't. There's nothing. There's, there, they, they, they say this, is, this, can, this can be a sign of um, scale or mealybugs or whitefly or aphids. Well, I don't have any of that. So I really don't know what is causing it. Now, I think I did say in my last video uh, my Stenanthe, I had it on there too. And that one, that didn't show really any signs of any other pests either. So, I'm kind of at a loss here. And, you know, I tell you guys all the time, I'm not, I'm not an expert on plants. I'm not a botanist. Um, I apologize for that. That's that is my home phone that we've had to relocate to the living room because it's the only number that my mom can remember, and she's 88 years old. So I have to have it where I can hear the phone right away if she calls. I know for a fact that's not her because she's at lunch right now, and. Um, but I can't shut the ringer off. So I apologize for that interruption. And you're going to hear that periodically in the future. So I'll appreciate it if you guys can just ignore it. I know I do. I, I know we tend to apologize for all the background noises. And I'll tell you, sometimes when I'm watching a video, I don't even hear it until they point it out. So I hope that that's going to be the case with me. And realize that we're not here making a... You know, we're not in the MGM studio, per se. We're just at, at home or wherever, living life and trying to make a go. And uh, we're not looking for perfection. At least I'm not. And I'm pretty sure most of my followers aren't either. So I appreciate your patience. Um, I also know that uh, Hoyas, um, some of the Hoyas and some of the clusters of flowers will drip sap. It's important to clean that up as soon as you see it, if it's on the table, surface of the table, because it will attract bugs, mostly ants. Now we did have, and I may have started to say this, we did have a problem with carpenter ants here a few months ago. Haven't seen any since my husband treated. I'm hoping that the problem is gone. And uh, I don't know if that is relating to this or not. I mean, and I don't know how I would figure that out. I think I got most of it. I'm gonna put some soil in my clean pot here. The other thing I want to do is cut this back because again it's getting leggy. Now I could leave this in these Leaves will eventually get big and full, but I don't even like the way this all is here. So, I'm 
I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. I, You know, the window that I had this in, I have my lipstick plants, and they love that east light. And those plants are getting bigger and bigger, so I was hoping that maybe when they got long enough, they would um, kind of shield, give me that dappled light that I'm looking for on my begonias. And that may still be the case, but for right now, this i got to get it out of there because it's... I don't like how they're, how the color is fading. Uh, these are supposed to be really dark green leaves, and they're not. And some of them are really getting bad. <clears throat> so, let's dig this out of here. I'm getting to the point where... I may have to look for a different vessel. You all know you recognize my trusty green, my trusty green pot, and this is where I put my old dirt and soil. But what happens is when I'm editing, when YouTube gives you those three pictures to look at to choose from, almost every time. There's at least one, if not two, pictures with this in it that YouTube automatically grabs. And I think it's because of the bright color. So I may have to find something different because it's a few steps process added to my editing time in order to get a picture of something without that's not to download your own still image. So I, I'm not sure that I want to go through that every time. So I don't know. I'm thinking about it anyway. Alright, this is really in here. Almost feels like it's rip bound. Boy, I'd find that hard to believe. But we'll see in a moment. didn't bring my spatula. I didn't think I would need it because it hasn't been that long since I put this in this pot. But I guess I was wrong. Alright. Here we go. Pretty healthy root system here. Hmm. I don't think that pot's going to be big enough. I'm just looking over her stems to see if I can see any sign of any insects, and I don't. You 
you know, sometimes I see things when I'm editing on that screen that I don't see in, in person. So it's possible um, that that may happen yet. We'll see. What on earth is this? Okay. No, I don't see anything. All right. I think I also would like to, I think I'm going to cut this back as well because as you all know I really love the, I love the, the, the hanging plants. But I don't like straggly hanging plants, and I don't like straggly upright plants either. I like them to be full and bushy and healthy looking. And this is going to get planted to right about here. Right about here. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to cut this off. I think right here. It's right above a node and it leaves me a node. Now I gotta I gotta put this where I'm not gonna forget which direction. Because if you put it in upside down, it will not grow. <laughs> now this is from the last time that I propagated it. I have a video on that too where I cut it here and this is the new growth from that. So I'm not sure what I want to do here. Do I want to cut this back down to here? And I think the answer is going to be yes. But I'm not sure if that's a smart thing to do because I don't have any leaves left then. <sighs> It's what I want to do, but I don't think I should. I think I'm going to, um, and actually it almost looks like there was a leaf on there that dried up. So let's give it some time. Let's, let's go ahead and put this in the new soil the way it is. <clears throat> and uh, see what happens. And I guess I'm... Am I going to have to do that with all of these? It almost looks that way. <laughs> Sorry, folks, for the delay here. I got to think. I'm not, I wasn't planning on the, having this decision. I thought this was going to come out all in one 
in one big uh, clump and I was just going to transfer it. Oh yeah, now see there is a new shoot coming here and it looks like it tried to put something out up here. So I think we're going to just leave it. I think I'm going to just leave it. Make sure there's nothing on these stems. And this one, however, this will, this is not, this, this is not happening. This is going to be a different situation. You know what? I went to get my glasses. Someday, when I'm dead and gone, and you guys are watching these old videos, you're going to say, remember that Linda Sue plants for you? That lady that forgot something on every video, and you could hear her shuffling across the floor to go get it? <coughs> and you'll all hopefully have a good laugh on that one. And go ahead. Have a good laugh on me. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Now here. The reason I got up to get my glasses is because there's something going on in this stem. <coughs> okay, did I move that? Do you see that? I don't know what that is. It's a white and silvery film. Well, that was hydrogen peroxide I just poured on there, and I didn't see or hear any fizzling, although my hearing's not all that great, so it don't necessarily mean anything, but I wanted to see if it would fizzle, and it didn't, so I don't know. I wish I had all the answers for you folks, but I don't. There are some brown bumps on here that could be scale. That's why I'm staring at this and wondering. And there's such a thing as root mealybugs too, but I'm not seeing any any signs of any. They'll usually have like a little nest. This is all perlite that I'm feeling. So, okay, I don't think that's the problem. And you can get little little bumps on your plants that aren't 
necessarily scale. Now I don't like how quickly that popped off of there. And that I'm wondering. I'm hoping that that's not scale. But I'm going to pull it off just in case. What I don't know, and I guess I should research this, is find out where the scale comes from. Because I've had these plants for a couple of years. Well, at least a year, year and a half. So, if that is scale, I'm assuming it would have to have been on there for a long time. And I hope that's not the problem because I did buy this from a reputable plant store plant greenhouse gardening center and and you know they have pests too folks don't get me wrong that it's it's impossible to have that amount of plants and not have plant press but usually they will treat them and I, I think that's one of the reasons why I don't get up in arms about using treatments at home because they use them in, in the greenhouses. I, there might be one or two that, that use all natural. If there are, I don't know who they are. I don't know any, any uh, greenhouse that doesn't use pesticides. And So that's already in the plant, okay, when you get it. It's up in there. The roots drink it up. Now, if you don't want to add to that because you don't want to further add to the problem, I, I completely understand that. I don't like unnatural products either. In fact, I won't even eat a regular lemon anymore. If it's not organic, I won't I won't buy it because there's such a huge difference in the flavor and the taste and the juice. And obviously it's better for you. But All right, enough about that. Let's get this done, right? Carry on, Linda, and quit yakking. Okay. Now, I don't see any, yeah, oh yeah, I do see something down here. But this doesn't necessarily mean it's scale. This is, this is the thing that I get confused about myself. Because you can have this type of thing on a plant, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's scale. It can just be a natural part of the stem. And because I've never had, exp you know, I've never experienced that before. I have nothing to compare it to. And you can watch all the videos in the world and that's not necessarily going to help you. One thing I did learn over the years is um, most of the time if it's part of the plant it's not going to pop off when you scrape it like this is which is scaring me because if this is scale scale is contagious it's not it's not going to decimate your plant collection, but it is something that needs to be addressed. And so, I am going to take the time to do that right now because I don't know. I don't know for sure what it is I'm dealing with. Now, scale usually will also produce some type of um, telltale sign on the leaves, on the backs of the leaves, usually right along the vein of the plant. Let me show you what I mean by that. Um, normally when you see scale you'll see the little brown bumps <clears throat> along here and along these veins. Okay, hope you guys can see that. And again, along here and along along these veins and I don't see anything on any of these leaves nothing 
I see a little old damage from when it had thrips. That's it. I don't see any signs of scale, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to get this cleaned up and repot it and move on to the next one. I want to clean up the, the table that this is sitting on and move some things around. Um, so I've got a lot to do here and really shouldn't be taking this much time on this, but I just wanted you guys to get the full picture of what's going on here. The other thing is, I know that, um, and this is alcohol, folks, alcohol and water. It's not going to hurt the plant. One of the things that I'm thinking about is if I can get all of my plants healthy at one time, and have them looking nice for you, I would like to do a, a video of this room. But it seems like just about the time I, I get rid of one problem, I end up with another. So, I don't know what to say about that. Alright, I think that's enough futzing around here. This is dried up here, so I don't know why I should leave that on. I'm not going to. I'm going to cut this back. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go cut all the way down to here. Where we have green living... And, I don't know if I should cut this down here. There is a new shoot coming out up here, so, and there's a new one here. So I think I'm just going to leave it. As much as I'm tempted to just cut this whole thing back, because it's straggly and strange looking. And this thing is very long. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and show you. It's got to be about, it's a good three feet, a good yardstick, yep. Yeah. But I got all this going on here, and that's just not going to do for me. So, I am going to, now let me look down here. Yeah, I got some more of those bumps. And again, I'm not sure what they are, but I'm... I'm going to scrape them off anyway. Okay. This top piece is going to go in the soil. So, let me see where do I want to cut this. I think right here. I'm going to cut it right here because if this don't work, I have one more node, actually two, but one viable one right here where new growth can come from. And it'll give me two nodes to root from. So, okay. Now last time I took some cuttings from my begonias, I rooted them in water and they rooted very quickly. Um... But I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to put it directly in the soil. And the reason is because I have to then make extra room for those cuttings when I put them in water. And it's just something else that i got to keep an eye on. So I'm actually making more work for myself. 
I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put them all. I'm going to put them all in in the soil. Very fine roots. Begonias have very fine roots. <clears throat> okay. Let's get rid of that. It's actually kind of fun making a mess, isn't it? I don't mind. I feel bad about the mess on the floor, though. <laughs> well, it's okay. We'll get it cleaned up. That's what they make a broom and dustpan for. Or my husband will come in behind me with the vacuum cleaner. And that's okay, too, but only if it's a few days later because... One thing you don't want to do is vacuum up live pests and have them sitting in your vacuum cleaner because then you're spreading them all over the house. So, all right. I'll put this one in last because it has no ruts. I don't know if you guys saw my... My last video that I did, it was this one or the or my other maculata, and I took some cutting to make it fuller. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I was so concentrating on some other portion of what I was trying to tell you that I was actually shoving the cutting in upside down, and I didn't notice I was doing that until I was. I'm going to pull this off of here. In fact, I'm just wondering about this whole stem right here. These leaves are showing signs. You see how they're puckered? And how it's getting translucent? Ugh. I think I'll just I'm just going to pull this one off because I really don't like the looks of that. That is that is a sign of um, pest damage there. So, And although I don't see any pests... Oh, yeah. Boy, that almost looks like thrips. You see that? <sighs> so I guess it's possible that I didn't get them all, but you know, I'm I'm treating all the time now, so. We'll just leave it in there. Getting back to my story. I was putting the cutting in upside down. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I didn't notice it until I was editing the video. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> because not only was I sticking it down in there. I was wondering why it wouldn't go. And I was shoving it and shoving it and shoving it. And it wouldn't go because it had a little growth at the top. It had a, you know, a leaf starting with. So it was, the friction of that there was keeping it from going down into the soil. 
And I mean, you think I would have looked at that, right? And apparently I must have and eventually realized what I was doing and then I, I turned it around, but I couldn't believe it. And then I, there I had it up on the screen. But you know what's even more? Oh, here's some more of that white stuff. Darn it. What was even funnier to me and more perplexing is that nobody else saw it. Those of you that watch my video never even commented on that, which really blew me away. I thought for sure somebody was going to call me out on that one, but nobody did. So I probably could have got away with it, right, and not said a word, but... Yeah, there I was, jamming it down in the soil and wondering what, what's wrong, why isn't this going down? <laughs> yeah. Never a dull moment. My hubby always says that's why I keep her around. Because I make them laugh. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to get a close-up of this here. This is another stem that had the white on it. And I just don't know if those bumps are scale or if they're just uh, places where roots used to be that aren't anymore. I don't know. I just don't know. But like I said, we're not... We're not experts here. I'm not a botanist. I'm doing the best I can. And if there's someone out there that can help with this issue, by all means, by all means. The one thing that I don't like, though, is when if somebody... Is... I've had people in the past, it hasn't happened in a long time, but I've had people in the past that uh, will talk very authoritative on something that we did and uh, they really did not know what they were talking about so I, I'm, I caution you even if you see someone putting information on, in the comment section to uh, you know still do your own research because and sometimes people truly believe what they're saying is correct um, but it turns about it turns out to do more harm than good so be careful folks I've heard a lot of misinformation on the internet and it's I just cringe because I feel so sorry for the people who are gonna uh, adhere to that advice and, and it's when it's in when it's way incorrect and it's the opposite of what they're telling you. And there's no way of letting you know that. I mean, on YouTube, I guess we could. But I'm not in the habit of uh, correcting people on YouTube. I, and I don't want to get into that either. Um, I know that a lot of times it's just very well-intentioned people that are trying to help. So... What you do, you need to be careful. Okay. All right. I think we're at the end of another long video. And I appreciate those of you that take the time to tell me you love my long videos because for some reason I can't seem to make a video that's under 25, 30 minutes. Okay, and part of the reason they're falling here is because the soil is so dry, so I'm going to <coughs> I think before I put her in here, I'm going to put a little rooting powder on her, and I'm going to wet the soil down, and then I'll clean up my mess and you can see the finished product. Oh, 
All right. All right, and here we go. The final episode. <laughs> so there she is, my friends. All healthy and beautiful looking again. And hopefully we can keep her that way. I did discover two things while I was cleaning up here. Um, I do have a spot to put her in, which I'm very happy about, that I think she's going to do well in, and you'll see that down the road. The other thing I wanted to tell you is uh, the um, white stuff that we found on the inside of the stem, I it happened, it, it dawned on me that those stems that I pulled out were actually cuttings and I rooted them in in, in uh, water with rooting powder so I'm pretty sure that's what I was seeing on this stem in fact I'm positive that's what it was now that I look back on it it was just the the residue from the rooting powder so no worries on that thank goodness the other thing I want to mention is as I was making a space to put this cleaning up around the area where this was and trying to make room for a different plant. Um, I went to pick up a, a, a lipstick for my lipstick plant that was laying there and it was sticky, in fact, stuck to the windowsill. So I'm wondering if that <clears throat> plant, because it's right above here, if those lipsticks aren't dripping this sticky substance on these leaves because I didn't find that on any other plant that was in or around or touching touching this and this is directly under that lipstick plant so keep your fingers and toes crossed for me because maybe that was the issue here although I don't know because I wouldn't explain the problem on my other plant that's on the other end of the house but it's, it's something I can hope for anyway but okay so here she is all done in her glory and I did I did end up cutting this the longer one back even a little further after I put you guys on pause because I realized it was just sticking out way too far in fact I was tempted to cut this one back even more and I'm, I'm still not sure that I won't do that and if I do it'll be you know right here above the node and then put this whole thing down in here I might still do that just because this piece sticks out so far from the rest and I kind of want them to be fuller rather than long and leggy. <clears throat> so that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys learned something. I hope I helped you. I hope I didn't confuse you more. <laughs> and uh, all I can say is happy propagating, happy planting, and let's just continue to enjoy each other's um, you know, journeys down the down the plant road here, and and hopefully we can continue to help each other. Okay, all right, you all. I'm gonna go have uh, get this edited and get it loaded up for you. So hopefully you can still view it yet this evening, and that'll be it for me for today. I do have a lot more content coming, interesting content actually that I think uh, everyone would be interested to hear. So. Do come back, and until then, have a great day. Bye now.